Double Tennis Junkies. This week's video is a list of top 10 questions I get asked when people first find out that I'm a professional table tennis player. Just a quick disclaimer, I find a lot of these questions pretty humorous and I'm not trying to be arrogant or demeaning in any way. I just get asked these all the time, so I thought it would be fun to put, a, get, put together a quick video to just kind of answer them all. If you're a part of the table tennis community, I'm sure you can relate. Anyway, let's get going. Question number 10, can I beat Forrest Gump? Short answer is yes. Forrest is good at virtually everything he does, but he's not a very good table tennis player. In the movie, he's a world champion, but in reality, he would probably be beaten by virtually any competitive ping pong player. So he should probably stick to running. If you haven't seen Forrest Gump, you should probably go watch it. It's a classic and definitely worth seeing. Question number nine, do I play really far back from the table? My style is actually to play kind of mid distance or close to the table. A lot of defensive players can play like 20 to 30 feet back, but for me, I'm generally trying to aim between three and 10 feet from the table because I'm a really aggressive player. Question number eight, can I beat the Chinese? Well, China has a lot of people and a lot of players. I can probably beat about 99.9% .9 of them, but their top players are the best in the world and they would kick my trash. The closest I came to beating a top Chinese player was in the 2007 World Junior Championships. I was playing the number two junior in the world from China and I was up 6-2 in the final game and I ended up losing my focus and blowing the match and it still kind of stings to this day and I regret some of the decisions I made to, to lose that match. Question number seven, is table tennis in the Olympics? Table tennis became an Olympic sport in 1988 and it's been in the Olympics ever since. A lot of people don't know this, but the International Olympic Committee actually limits the number of sports allowed in the Olympics. So the Summer Olympics in 2016 had 28 Olympic sports and table tennis was one of them. Question number six, is it ping pong or table tennis? I get this question a lot and essentially it's the exact same thing. Ping pong was trademarked by the Parker Brothers board game company in 1948 and table tennis is the official name of the sport. Think like Kleenex and tissue or Q-tip cotton swab, table tennis, ping pong. I've heard that people might get offended if you call it ping pong instead of table tennis. I've never actually met anyone who got offended by calling it ping pong. In fact, I call it ping pong and I play it all the time and I've done it professionally and I coach it professionally. Um, call it ping pong, call it table tennis, doesn't really matter. But generally what I think of ping pong, it's usually when people are like playing with their friends in their basement or hitting around with people in their neighborhood or at work. Or table tennis, you kind of have to be more physically fit. You, you need to be able to manipulate the ball with the spins and there's a lot more technical skills involved with it. So there might be a little bit of a difference, but the naming is just a name and it doesn't really matter what you call it. Question five, should you smash the like button? Yes, you should smash the like button. Seriously though, hit the like button. It helps me out, helps my channel out. If you know anybody who might like this video, maybe somebody who has been asked these questions, or maybe there's somebody who's asked you one of these questions, share it with them because you might get a good laugh out of it and it'd be fun. Question four, how much is the equipment that I use and where do I buy it from? Well, the racket rubber combination that I use is from Butterfly. They're pricier than most of the other brands and the, the setup I have costs around $450, which is probably on the high end. It's not the highest you can go, but it's certainly more expensive than most equipment. Um, Butterfly doesn't pay me or sponsor me in any way to make these videos, but I do believe that they make the best equipment for rackets and rubbers. Um, and other good equipment companies are Donic or Nataku or Stiga, and you can buy them from Butterfly Online or Paddle Palace or Dandoy or Table Tennis 11 or there's a bunch of websites out there. What I don't recommend if you're trying to get into table tennis is buying equipment from Walmart or Dick Sporting Goods or other sporting goods stores because the quality is just going to be pretty bad from those stores. Even if you buy like Butterfly or Stiga, it might be branded by them, but it's going to be bottom of the barrel stuff and really not very good. It's important to have good equipment if you're trying to get better at table tennis because if you have bad equipment, you can do the proper strokes, but they're not going to work. You can pretty much only do the improper strokes if you don't have the right equipment. So I'd say if you're trying to get good at table tennis, having the right equipment is actually pretty important. I'll put a few links in the description of some different rackets and rubbers I recommend if you're just kind of starting out in table tennis. It doesn't have to be $450. You can get some, some good quality stuff at a much cheaper price that is gonna be much better than what you'd find at like the, the local sporting goods store. Question number three, what does Cho mean? Cho, I actually don't know what it means. Uh, if you watch like YouTube videos, a lot of the top players will yell Cho when they win the point, or if you're at a tournament, a lot of people will scream Cho. 
it's, uh, it's, I, I've asked around and people don't seem to know what it means. So I actually think it's just a way of pumping yourself up and aggravating my wife or other spectators who might be watching and there's no real meaning to it. I think it's just kind of like, yeah, pumping yourself up. Question number two. I know somebody really good at ping pong who you have to play. Will you please play him? I get asked this all the time. And actually, as I was preparing for this video, a door-to-door -door salesman came by, rang the doorbell, and we were actually talking about table tennis for some reason. And he has a friend who is really good, and I have to play him apparently. So just to kind of compare, like, I don't want to sound arrogant, but it really wouldn't be any competition. And to kind of show an analogy is, imagine if you have a friend who is really good at basketball, he shoots hoops all the time in his backyard, he can beat all his friends in horse, and then putting him one-on-one -on -one against somebody in, in the NBA. Like, there, there really wouldn't be any comparison between the two. It's really like that for any professional athlete for any sport. And there's a level that's just kind of above what most people can kind of understand or comprehend. And that professional athlete is gonna beat that non-professional athlete pretty handily. And it's just the reality of it. That being said, I'd love to play your friends. If you know somebody that I should play or you'd like me to play or you just want me to beat somebody, I'd love to play them. Question number one, is table tennis a real sport? The word sport is pretty arbitrary now with like video games being considered sports. Like, I mean, come on, like whatever. Um, but anyway, table tennis, it's very physical. You have to be in really good shape uh, to compete at the top levels. You have to be extremely technical. You have to have really good reflexes and I would consider it a sport. The last one is a bonus one. How did I get started in table tennis? I got started when my dad got a table for his birthday when I was five years old. I started playing with my family and I joined a team when I was six and I actually started competing nationally when I was six years old. So then that's how I got started. That's all for this week's video. Let me know what questions you get asked all the time. I'd love to hear them in the comments. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe for more content. And as always, I'll see you next week. Thanks.